Welcome and thank you for joining us this evening for the Measure M Parks for All community meeting. Tonight's meeting will focus on parks, facilities, and amenities in the Northeast Santa Rosa. We will begin the meeting and the presentation at about 535 to give all those attendees an opportunity to join and settle in. We will go ahead and begin the meeting. Thank you all for being here tonight. I'm Kim Link and I'm with the Santa Rosa Parks Foundation. Live Spanish translation is available at tonight's meeting. Interpretation services are being provided by Pablo and Charles with the International Effectiveness Center. Live interpretation can be heard on the Spanish channel. You can join the Spanish channel by clicking on the interpretation icon that resembles a globe on the Zoom toolbar on your screen. Once you join the Spanish channel, it's recommended that you shut off the main audio so you can clearly hear the Spanish interpretation. Thanks, Kim. 
My name is Jen Santos and I am the Parks Deputy Director for the City of Santa Rosa. And I also wanted to introduce folks that are working behind the scenes. Uh, we, we have uh, Steve Brown, Emily Ander, and Mary Lou Nichols that are all uh, staff here at the city helping to facilitate this meeting. Hopefully we can have it run really smoothly. Um, they'll also be managing the Q&A feature in the Zoom uh, meeting, and we'll be taking notes for follow-up as needed. And as um, I've got a little bit of housekeeping here to read a few things here, as members of the public join the meeting, you will be participating as an attendee. Your microphone will be muted and camera will be off. Only today's panelists will be viewed during the meeting. Please know the city of Santa Rosa is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption. We will not tolerate any hateful speech or actions and we'll monitor that everyone is participating respectfully uh, or they will be removed. And if necessary, we will conclude the meeting early. Host Ander, will you please explain how public comments will be heard at today's meeting? Yes, Jen. If you are calling in from a telephone and choose to speak during the public question and answer portion of today's meeting, for privacy concerns, host Nichols will rename your viewable phone number to caller with the last four digits of your phone number. At two points in the presentation, Jen will open the floor for questions and answers and public comments. Host Nichols will be lowering all raised hands until the question and answer portion of the meeting is open. Once Jen has called for public questions or comments, the host will announce for the public to raise their hand if they wish to ask a question or comment related to this presentation. If you are calling in to listen to the meeting by telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. The host will then call on the public one by one um, who have their Zoom hands raised. The host will unmute your microphone for your comment. A three minute courtesy timer will appear while you ask your question or make your comment. Once you have asked your question or shared your input, the host will lower your hand and mute your microphone so our panelists may respond to your question. You will need to raise your hand again if a follow-up question is generated based upon the response you received. There is also the opportunity to ask questions throughout the presentation by clicking the Q&A feature in your Zoom toolbar and typing in your question. The host will monitor these questions and will answer them in writing as time allows, or will ask the presenters to answer them live at intervals throughout the presentation. Any questions not covered during the presentation will be addressed during the Q&A and public comment period during the presentation. We ask that those listening on the Spanish channel, but wishing to make a public comment or ask a question to turn off and leave the interpretation entirely at the time you hear your name called so you can join the main channel to make your public comments heard and they'll be translated into English. Um, the icon may look like a circle with an E S in the middle and the word Spanish underneath. You can then rejoin the Spanish channel at the conclusion of your comment to continue listening in Spanish. Thank you. Thank you, host Anders. I'm Kim Link and I'm the current president of the Santa Rosa Parks Foundation. I've been involved with the Parks Foundation for the past four years. The Parks Foundation is a nonprofit 501c3 that aims to build partnerships between people and city parks, um, bridging the gap between the needs of the parks and fulfilling the needs of our community. We have collected and raised funds for such projects as the train engine at Howard's Park the ADA car for Howard's Park, and we worked with the city of Santa Rosa's Park Department for, to fundraise and serve as a sole source for collecting donations to help rebuild Santa Rosa's fire damaged city parks. My full-time job is with Visit Santa Rosa, and we are a marketing organization. Within that organization, we encourage and support all to utilize our parks for all types of events and uses. Being a part of this meeting is super important to me in my role, both as the foundation 
with the foundation and as an employee of Visit Santa Rosa and now as a new resident of Santa Rosa. I just bought a house in Santa Rosa and I actually live in the Northeast Quadrant. I feel it's a great opportunity to hear from you on what the parks mean to each of you and where the, com and where the community would like to see monies from Measure M utilized. Especially with the Parks Foundation, the series of meetings along with this survey will allow our foundation to have a roadmap, so to speak, and to set priorities of what's important to the community. It will allow the foundation to really see where we might be able to help and raise funds for additional and specific projects. I look forward to hearing from all of you. And I would like now to introduce Jen Santos. Jen is the Deputy Director of Parks and we'll be giving the presentation tonight. Thank you, Kim. I really appreciate that. And I just wanna take a moment to thank you uh, and the Parks Foundation. Uh, this, the Parks Foundation has been in partnership with the city for, for many years. Uh, and it's really been a huge benefit to this community to have them helping connecting the community to uh, record parks and, and making things happen. The, the train was a really momentous occasion. We got a new train that was when we like to celebrate. But uh, the other thing that they also have raised funds to help us with our fire damaged parks, uh, in particular Coffee Park. Uh, and so they, they really do a lot of great good in the community. And I encourage you to um, check them out a little bit more at their website if you are interested in learning more. And with that, we'll go ahead and get the meeting start to, started. To It is still tonight. Yeah, it's tonight. <laughs> uh, so this is what we're going to talk about, Measure M. We're going to do an overview. And we're going to look at the citywide park system briefly overall. And then we're going to focus in on what is the northeast quadrant of the city, its parks and amenities. And of course, we are going to look at the measure, the tax measure itself, the priorities. We have some surveys and questions and polling for you, and we have opportunities for questions and answers. Um, and then we also have um, some information for you on what the next steps are in the process, uh, not only tonight, but with other future Measure M meetings and the entire lifespan of the tax measure. And for those of you, for whatever reason, need to leave early in the evening, or if you have any questions or you have friends or uh, neighbors that were not able to attend, uh, the website that you see at the bottom there, srcity.org, Parks for All, that's where everything related to Measure M Parks for All lives. So if you're curious, when is the next meeting? Um, I miss the survey. Can I take the survey? Everything will be there, including present these presentations. Uh, we're also going to develop, um, ex expand our FAQ, our frequently asked questions section to kind of help to make sure if there's questions we can't answer tonight that we can address them there. Next slide, please. So let's take a look at the measure itself. Um, it was passed by the voters in the county November 6, 2018 uh, with fantastic support. That's really great support for a tax measure like this. The tax is actually a one eighth cent sales tax that lasts for 10 years, 2019 essentially to the very end of 2029. Obviously the, the last part of that funding will end sometime in 2028 so that we can finish projects by that March 31st, 2029 deadline. Uh, what the tax does is it provides essentially approximately 1.9 million annually to the city to be used for recreation and parks needs. We anticipate that it will be uh, about $1.9 million a year, sometimes a little higher, sometimes a little lower, depending on the taxes over 10 years. So we we're really looking forward to this is an amazing opportunity for the community and for us to listen and hear what you'll have to say and look at your priorities. Uh, there is a baseline commitment to be made for this tax measure. And we also have a citizens over, oversight committee that we meet with several times a year to make sure that the projects and the ideas and thoughts we have to use with this funding meet the requirements of the tax measure and are fiscally sound. The baseline commitment means that 
we can use those funds to supplement what we do at the city, add to the city, add programs, maintenance, pro park projects, whatever is needed. Um, it does not allow you to supplant or, or use it for funding things that we're already funding right now entirely, if that makes any sense. And we can, we can go over that a little bit more. But essentially, it's for anything to do with record parks for the most part, uh, anything new or new programs. Uh, next slide, please. And so um, we'll look at, at the timeline. Uh, when are we gonna, what are we doing? <laughs> so we had the measure approved by the voters. And in uh, 2019 and 2020, the city council approved a priority expenditure plan of the funds. And this was an initial plan as well as the long-term plan. Uh, the initial plan dedicated the first two years of funding towards fire damaged parks and landscapes. It also set aside funding for a deferred maintenance park project priority list. And that's a long way of saying we're going to look at our parks and see what things need to be fixed and repaired. What is the condition of our parks? And so that work has already started. It's really exciting. We have a good idea internally what we know we need to do, but it's really great to have an objective opinion uh, from a consultant to really dig deep into our park system. And thirdly, uh, the council approved what we're doing tonight is engaging with the community to see for those remaining years, three through 10, what should we prioritize our spending on? Uh, because $1.9 million is a lot of money, but it certainly is not enough money to do everything we all want to do. So we need to think about priorities, and that's really what we're here to do tonight. Explain this measure and look at priorities. Um, in year three, so we're rolling into that right now, we are going to be sharing this information with our council-appointed Board of Community Services. They are... Um, an advisory body to the council and to recreation parks. And we will also be returning to council with the information we've collected at all of our Measure M meetings, as well as our consultant um, deferred maintenance study information. The Board of Community Services and is, a, is an advisory body and they'll be making a recommendation to council uh, upon hearing all of this information and then council will be approving the priority plan during the budget approval process. And the remaining years, we don't intend to uh, shut the doors. We still want to hear from you all. We will be continuing community engagement, uh, targeting groups that uh, we just had a, a one in December for sports where we target our sports groups so we can hear from groups that have a specific interest and make sure we're including that. And we're also going to be working with planning and economic development to make sure we're reaching groups that often don't speak up um, about their priorities and interests. We wanna make sure we're digging deep into the community and getting some feedback. We will be uh, coming back to council annually to update the priority list, the priorities that you're gonna make uh, this year and ongoing. And we want this to be flexible so that we can flex and accommodate things that we have interest in as time goes on. Next slide. So here is an exact list on the left of the parks measure allowable uses. And so I'm not gonna read all of them, but essentially I, we highlighted some key words in there to look at. Uh, maintain is one of them. So funding for additional maintenance, is that something we're interested in? Improve and develop. So that's um, develop new parks, replace old playgrounds, things like that. Um, create and expand parks, more parks, uh, expand on that trail, whatever, whatever that might be for you all, and uh, historic, historic facilities. Uh, develop paths and trails is another is another measure. Providing programs, so recreation program, are new programs we should have? Should we expand programs? And uh, last but not least, decreasing 
future fire, fire risks. So those are the priorities set in the tax measure. And we will be specifically asking you about those and, and asking for you to prioritize those um, eventually. We hope to give you enough information so that you can make an informed selection. And certainly this will be available online, uh, but we hope to get some feedback for you from you tonight. Next slide, please. And these next few slides are essentially going through those tax measure allowable uses with some images to help you understand what we mean. So maintenance of parks and recreation facilities to ensure safe, clean, accessible visitor experiences. And so that might be a variety of things to any of us, but if there's interest and this is where you want us to focus the funds, uh, this is one of the areas where we want you to select your priorities from. Next slide. And so parks for all uses. So that's improvements and uh, improve and develop athletic fields, playgrounds, restrooms, picnic areas, visitor amenities. Again, it's anything parks and recre recreation uh, related. And so that's um, new playgrounds, replacing old stuff, um, getting new fields expand. You know, if you look at the field on the left, we know we need to update that field. So those kind of things, this is where uh, this line item would be a priority for you if that's if that's important. Next slide, please. And so this one, this tax measure is about create and expand parks, trails, bikeways, public art, and recreational and historic facilities. So you can see some images there of Luther Burbank Home and Gardens, Fremont Park, our creek trails, things like that. So are these things that we should focus on? And so this is just uh, another area of focus for the parks measure. And if you're interested, this is where you should put your priority. Next slide. And so this is for planning and developing bike and path trails with connections to schools, community spaces, and regional trails. And so again, we've shown some images there, uh, but this is another allowable use to kind of get you thinking about what we mean by trails and pathways and what we have out there. Uh, the, the trail on the bottom is Rinconada Trail that um, goes into Madrone Elementary School. So, so if those things are important, this is, this is the area to concentrate on. Next slide, please. And uh, we also provide recreational, educational, and health programs for the community. We have uh, a lot of programming that we do at the city. We have a fantastic recreation program. Um, and so this one would be for anything additional that we should be doing with our programming. Um, should we be expanding any programming? This, is, this would be the place where you'd put your focus if that's your interest. Next slide, please. So this is decreasing future fire risk, fuel loads, and invasive plants on city owned open space parks. So we put in a, a variety of photos. The one on the top right is from Francis Nielsen Park. And uh, also the, the pond on the left does get um, overloaded with invasive plants from time to time. We do work really hard on that, believe it or not, to try to make it pretty, pretty clean looking. Um, so again, these are just, we just went through that same list that we provided earlier with some visuals. I know I'm a visual learner. Sometimes it's helpful to go, what do you mean by that? So we mean by eliminating additional fuel loads that um, for fire. And so we've gone through um, the types of allowable uses for the Measure N Parks Fund for All, or Parks for All Fund. <laughs> um, I wanted to dive into where do we receive other funding that the city utilizes now for recreation and parks needs. And so if you, if you look at this slide, essentially we have park project funding on the top left. Uh, we, receive park fun we receive funding for park development projects from our park development impact fees. So when a new residential housing development comes into the city or a smaller one, they have the option of either providing park land and working with the city to create a new park or provide a fee so the city can build a future park or update an existing park itself. And so we collect those fees in these quadrants, which is one of the reasons that we 
are looking at quadrant based meetings in the city and we're looking at the northeast quadrant tonight. We also occasionally get funds from the general fund fund uh, the general fund does stuff does fund park planning staff. Uh, for the most part, we also have park development impact fees funding some work from the park planning staff and we apply for um, in, in our view, a lot of grants each year to help double our money and uh, combine with grant uh, grants that are out there to really extend our funding. Recreation program, so recreation staff is funded 100% uh, by general fund. We all, they also have the measure O tax measure and that provides funding for neighborhood services only. Uh, parks and recreation maintenance staff are funded from the general fund for staffing and um, small maintenance needs. And uh, when we talk about deferred park and recreation maintenance, that means those things that we know need to be updated, but haven't been in quite a while because they're beyond just regular day to day maintenance. They need a little bit more. They need um, they need a little bit more funding for those. There isn't a specific funding source in the city for those kind of items. We do our best to um, look at potential park development impact fees for that. Uh, we do look from the, to the general fund from time to time, um, but we, we don't have anything specifically outlined for that. Next slide. So earlier when I was talking about quadrants, um, I kind of wish I could have this map up all the time so you can see what we, what we mean. Um, but this, this map does a good job of talking about what we mean by park development impact fees. And so you can see we have four quadrants. Tonight, uh, we're meeting about the Northeast quadrant. You can see the kind of blue colored area that's within the city. Those are the areas that we're talking about for um, tonight. And I do want you to pay attention to this map because we are gonna ask you some simple questions coming up about where do you live? And this might help you. So the dark line going down the middle is Highway 101. And the dark line going generally horizontal and kind of curved is Highway 12. And so we'll roll into some community polling. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I know not everybody's a map reader. Uh, and that's okay. Just do your best to figure out uh, when we ask you generally where you live. We're going to be asking you per quadrant northwest southwest, northeast, and southeast, and everybody is 100% welcome to any of these meetings. You do not have to be from the northeast quadrant to participate tonight. We're happy to have you all. And so um, in order to get us started with, um, with some questioning, we're going to roll into the polling, and these are going to be some simple questions to get us used to answering questions live, and you'll be able to see the results live as well. And so um, I am going to turn this over to our host to describe how to participate in the polling. Jen, before we jump into that, there is a question directly related to funding. Would you like to answer oh. that now or do you want me to hold it till the Q&A? Oh, no, we can, we can answer that one right now. So why aren't use fees included in your recreation programming? <laughs> And uh, we, hopefully, as long as I understand this question, <laughs> we do include um, use fees and recreation programming by the general fund is supporting staff uh, as well as the programs that are going out there. So anything that's produced for re from recreation team is being funded uh, through the general fund. So when we collect fees from users, they go into the general fund and then the general fund comes back and supports those programs. So it's very circular. So let's see, why aren't use fees included in your recreation? Yeah, so so if I hope that answers your question, I'm not really sure. <laughs> um, but if that didn't quite uh, answer it, we do have a live question and answer coming up and hopefully I can do a better job at that point. But meanwhile, let's go ahead and roll into polling. And again, this is just, um, just an easy poll to try to get us used to using technology uh, and answering some quick questions. So I'll turn it back to you, Emily. Thank you. Um, all the poll questions are gonna be single or multiple choice. You must answer all the questions in order to submit your responses. The submit button is at the very end of the poll. You may need to scroll to the bottom of your screen to find it. 
If you are completing the poll on your smartphone, you must answer the first question before you can answer the second question, etc. If you are participating in the meeting via a landline, you will not be able to participate in the poll at this time. However, the poll will be posted to the project webpage on Monday and will be available until the remaining um, Measure M community outreach meetings are completed. Once everyone has completed the poll and it has been closed, the results will appear immediately and Jen will walk you through the results. Okay, let's look at that poll. <laughs> so again, make sure if you do want to participate that you are answering each, each question. Number one, where do you live? And that goes back to that map that we talked about earlier, just, just quadrants. We just generally wanna know uh, who's providing information to us so we can make sure um, we're responding accordingly. And then what is your age group? We like to collect that so we can make sure that we're really um, reaching out to all groups. And if not, then we can target some groups. How often do you visit Santa Rosa Park or Rec? Number three. And number four, this is really good for us. How did you hear about tonight's meeting? We always want to make sure that we are doing great outreach and that we are doing the, the right outreach. <laughs> So we'll give that a little bit more time for everybody to participate. And this will be fun because you'll be able to see the results live from everybody's participation. And also I'd like to thank everybody for being here on a Wednesday night. Really appreciate your time. Um, but this is a fun, fun topic for us to talk about what we would like to do with Rec and Parks. We have 26 of 31 recording and um, things have slowed down. Okay, all righty. Are we ready for the results then? All right, great. So here's our results and um, we're doing an old fashioned method to document the results, <laughs> just taking photos. So uh, I'm gonna give staff time to, and all of us time to look at it. It's kind of fun to see everybody's responses since we can't be together in person, this is the next best thing. Uh, so it's good that you know we've got a good uh, uh, section of the Northeast quadrant here as well as every quadrant represented and even outside. Fantastic. And what is your age group? Looks like we're missing 18 to 24 and under 18. Uh, we've got 65 and over at 42%. And how often do you visit the city of Santa Rosa Park or recreation facility? 46% uh, at least once a week. And then how did you hear about tonight's meeting? Most everybody heard about it from, looks like word of mouth as well as City Connections e-newsletter. Fantastic. And it's great for us to know. All right, so um, I will turn it back to the host to make sure they have collected all the information before we close the poll. One more second, please. Okay, we're good, thank you. Thank you and thank again to our hosts. They do, they make it, they do a great job behind the scenes making all this work for us. So we've taken a little bit of time to look at the big picture measure M. Um, and so we wanna focus a little bit more on the um, parks themselves within the city. And so we like to bring this map out quite often, 
Um, it's due for an update, but it's kind of a nice visual to see um, how we how we fit in the in the city. And you can see all the green on there are existing parks. This also does show some uh, state and county parks, but at least you can get a good sense of where existing parks are at, as well as the little red trees indicate potential new parks that we um, should or could have rolling into the future in order to make sure we have equality through the city. And this map is taken from the city's general plan. And there is a general plan update and we expect to have an updated map soon. But this will give you a good idea of what's going on in, in the city. So next slide. And so if you look at the big picture of the city overall by the numbers, it's just kind of fun to take a look at, well, how many parks do we have? And how many acre, acres do you have? And it, it's funny from a staff perspective, we look at it is depending on what questions you're asking and are you asking community park or neighborhood park do you want to include special use parks or recreation centers uh, oh do you want to include open space and trails and public gathering areas so uh, we have a lot of different types of parks and of course by far we have the most amount of neighborhood parks those are those are your smaller five acre to two acre typically smaller parks within your neighborhood. And then the community parks are around 20 acres plus. And so we have a little less of those because they're much bigger. And overall, 108 parks, uh, when you look at everything together and uh, a little over a thousand acres. Next slide, please. And so if we zoom in now uh, to just the Northeast quadrant and we're looking at the community parks, uh, this is more of a visual, and again, the visual learning, I, I like having these different ways of looking at the Northeast Quadrant. So you've got in the Northeast, Nagasawa Community Park, Rincon Valley Community Park, Skyhawk Community Park, and, and Doyle Community Park, as well as Franklin. And there's a lot of other, you know, we've got Juilliard Park in this quadrant as well, although it's not technically a community park, it's pretty big. So there's there's a lot going on in the Northeast Quadrant, we've got a good, a good cross section of parks. Next slide, please. And so here's just, you know, for the for those of us that are, are better with lists <laughs> and, and looking at all those parks, and if you're trying to find a park that you're used to seeing and you can't see it on a map, here's here's another way to look at it. And uh, we're also looking at recreation. Uh, uh, facilities as well. So you'll see we've got Doyle Park as well as the clubhouse. Uh, Steel, we've got Steel Lane Park as well as the community center. Um, trying to think of some other interesting, the Church of the Church of One Tree is also in this section. And we have our Ridgeway Swim Club. And of course, uh, Rush Creek Trail and little smaller parks like Ray Street, closer to downtown and Fremont Park. Uh, this really does have a pretty huge cross section, but this is what we mean by parks. It's all of the things that you think of that are available to us in the community to use for parks and recreation. Next slide, please. And so we're essentially looking, we're taking that citywide list we had and now just looking at the Northeast Quadrant for what, is the, what does this quadrant typically have? And so we've got those five big community parks, 19 smaller neighborhood parks. And we also have, you know, Courthouse Square, Luther Burbank Home and Gardens. We have some open spaces and we have quite a few trail parks and our public gathering areas. And so for the total number of park areas, it's, it's 40 with the acreage of 267 acres. So this is a good, there's a quite a few parks in this area, especially because we're including some of those older parks from the city in the city core in the downtown area is also part of the Northeast Quadrant, right where 101 and Highway 12 come together. And I have to, I always have to think about it in my mind because um, it does encompass that entire area. So let's look at the next slide. So uh, we also talk about not just the parks, but the amenities within all of these parks. 
And we thought it would be a good idea to show you what we mean when we say amenity. All of these things are amenities in one way or another. And these are things that are contained within the Northeast Quadrant, 18 playgrounds. Uh, we have um, boat ramps at, at Nagasawa Park. We have trails. There's public art scattered throughout the parks. We have some horseshoe courts at Doyle in the pool. And of course, um, uh, 14 picnic tables. Those are probably just the ones that we have record of. <laughs> I feel like we have a lot more than 14 picnic tables in the entire quadrant. <laughs> Uh, but this this will give you a good cross section of what we mean when we say amenity. It's everything that you could do, picnic tables, everything that you could do, sports activities at a at a park. And so um, at this point, before we let's go ahead and roll to the next slide. Uh, before we dive into questions specifically about Measure M. We've covered a lot of information and we wanted to pause here and look at some questions and answers for Measure M. We will do our best to answer. It would be great if we would know everything, but um, if there's anything that we can't answer tonight, we will put it within our frequently asked questions and answer it online so it'll be available to everybody. Um, and so I am gonna turn it back over to our host to help us with the questions and answers. And then right after this, we'll be going into polling, I believe, yes. So, and then we'll have another opportunity for um, questions and answers after the polling, just in case after you came up with a new question. So I'll turn it over to the host now. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Once Jen calls for public questions and comments, host Nichols will announce for anyone wishing to ask a question or comment to raise their hand in Zoom. For individuals wishing to participate in the meeting by telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. Host Nichols will then call on the public one by one who have their hands raised. The host will unmute your microphone so you may ask your question. A courtesy timer of three minutes will appear while you ask your question and make your comment. Once you have raised your hand and asked your question or shared your input, the host will lower your hand and mute your microphone so our panelists may respond. You will need to raise your hand again if a follow-up question is generated based upon the response you received. And um, all the hands are going to be cleared right now, and then um, Jen will ask for questions um, while I pull up the um, timer slide, and then you can raise your hands again. Thank you. I want to remind you, if you're participating in a meeting from the Spanish channel in Zoom, we have an interpreter on standby on the English channel to assist during your public comment. If you wish to make a public comment, please be sure to pause throughout your comment to allow for the interpretation. Those using interpreter support will be afforded additional time for your public comment as required by the Brown Act. For Spanish speakers, <clears throat> at the time you hear your name called, turn off the Spanish channel to make your public comment. This icon may look like a circle with an ES in the middle and the word Spanish underneath. Can the interpreter on the Spanish channel currently not translating live, please raise your hand so I can move you to the panelist side to assist with, this, uh, with the speakers. Okay, I'm gonna check in with our hosts. Are we ready to move forward with questions and answers or do we need to um, do anything just, else? Yeah, just one moment. Okay. There are two questions in the Q and A. Um. All right. All right, interpreter, uh, interpreter uh, Charles, can you please turn on your microphone and camera to translate? Thank you.
Okay, checking in with our host one last time. Are we ready to move forward? One yes. moment, yes. Inter um, interpreter Charles does not have a camera, so he will just be speaking. Okay, then I will turn it over to the host to get us started with uh, answering some live questions and then we'll go to the Q&A um, uh, that we have down below uh, later if we need to do that. So we'll, let's start with folks who are here and have a question to ask. Thank you, Jen. We have three speakers. The first is Kate Lewis, followed by Maureen and then Sean. Kate, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your name if you so choose, and you may state your question or comment. Hi, my name is Kate Lewis, and thank you for hosting this meeting. Um, I am here with a comment and a request. I live near Franklin Park and have done so for almost 20 years. Um, and a few years ago, we were lucky enough to adopt a dog. And I said, why am I driving all the way to Rincon Valley or Doyle Park to um, go to a dog park when I've got this massive Franklin Park within walking distance from my home? I did a quick query in 2018 and over a hundred people um, responded quickly saying that they were neighbors and friends and dog owners who supported having a dog park at Franklin Park. Folks still feel that way now here a few years later. Um, some of the reasons that neighbors have cited around being interested in, in the dog park at Franklin Park is that having increased neighborhood use there would reduce park crime. Um, we generally have about 200 police calls out to Franklin Park every year, looking at 2018 and 2019 Santa Rosa PD calls. That's 10 to 15 calls a month, and those are primarily around suspicious persons and vehicles. And we feel that having more neighbors using the park would help to alleviate folks finding corners and crevices to get up to suspicious activities there. Um, neighbors even that are not dog owners who maybe bring their children there to the playground or um, as well as the, the neighborhood preschool that is there are also supportive of having a dog park because of the, the leash, the off leash activity there. So um, having a, an enclosed dark dog park would minimize off leash activity and give, give an area for that. Um, that park, Franklin Park is walking distance for thousands. Um, in the McDonald area, Murdoch Terrace, Lomitas Flats, Steel Lane, all ones that would otherwise have to drive to exercise their dog. And as far as Measure M is concerned, adding that amenity to Franklin Park would increase um, the, the neighborhood health um, as neighbors are out and being part of a community and engaging with one another as they're exercising their dogs, as well as getting to know one another and 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 knowing who their neighbors are. So thank you once again for, for hosting this meeting. I hope we can put forward a dog park at Franklin Park as an option to be funded through Measure M. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Maureen Glancy. Maureen, I've enabled your speaking permission. State your full name for the record if you so choose and proceed with your question or comment. I'm Maureen Glancy and I actually live at Friends House, but um, I've been a recreation and parks professional and taught majors for probably 25 years. So I'm very interested. Uh, my, my first question has to do with what is the proportional rate of acreage to citizens in the area or to households in the area. I don't know if you've ever, if there are any codes that say there must be uh, the equivalent of an acre park per every 10 households. Um, but that would be helpful because this is one of the areas where there are new homes going in and lots of young children, uh, families with children. And it would be lovely if there were more of that. I, 
I have a comment. Um, I'm a person who loves to roam, but I, I don't feel led to roam here. I've walked the creek trail now and then, but it's bits and pieces. And I would certainly love to be um, perhaps more aware of trails that might be five, five miles long through one of the park areas. Uh, I, I'm not aware of that and I have uh, pull out park, um, you know, information on walking trails, but it all seems very urban to me. It doesn't seem as though it goes into some of the green areas that I can see on your map. Um, and the other thing is that one of the things we think of because we're putting people out of doors for park usage is that we forget that the arts are not just a visual art, but it can be a participatory art. Um, one of the things that has really been welcomed in many parks across the country are small stages. They, you know, they might be not more than 20 by 15 feet and they're only a foot off the ground and maybe a couple or, or three benches in front of them. But children are so driven to be dramatic. And it also is a place where there could be small bands of kids with kids or teens or adults. And if there were electrification available that could be reserved and unlocked, I'm not saying open, but available, um, there could, it just seems to me that the dramatics and the singing and things like that would be so wonderful to have. Um, and picnic tables are fine for eating, and I see the nine seconds, but I'd like to, you know, advocate for craft tables and game tables. Uh, all right, I'm done. <laughs> well, we, we appreciate it, and it is a courtesy timer, just so we can all have an idea. Um, you, you, you're welcome to continue if you'd like, but um, I can answer the acre per household type question you had. Uh, the general plan does specify um, that a community park should be generally within one mile of, of the next park next to it so that we have equality in park spaces throughout the city. Uh, obviously, we have a lot of um, nuances with every city. We have developers coming in and people purchasing land and doing things. So we, we try to balance that with the general plan activities of providing that one mile radius for community parks as well as a half mile radius for neighborhood parks throughout the entire city. Um, and that's that going back to that map that we had provided with the little trees on it. Those are where the new proposed uh, park should be. And that is, and that's what we mean by that. Generally, we're trying to hit that target. Uh, we can't always get that. We do our best to try to get that, um, to get that acreage and to get the acreage and the spread uh, as best as possible. Um, and if we can put a better answer online about acres per um, household, uh, we'll look that up and include that on our FAQs. Thank you. I appreciate your answer. And my concern is always the developers get the best land <laughs> and they leave the land uh, that is not central to where people live. And I'm always concerned about that. Um, so I will stop there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Sean Seiler, followed by Babs. Sean, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your full name for the record if you so choose and provide your comment or question. Yeah, hi, my name is Sean Seiler. I, uh, I'm a member of an organization called the UFOs. It's United Flyers of Sonoma. We've been engaged with the city of Santa Rosa for quite some time. Our uh, disc club membership uh, has been around since 1976 and you know, we, we help maintain and manage um, disc golf courses here around Sonoma County with uh, Taylor Mountain, Crane Creek, uh, Rosa Parks, Lake Sonoma, and uh, as well as some contribution to Stafford Lake. And so uh, we've, you know, of course, as a club been discussing uh, new park development and, you know, how to contribute and make more space for recreation. Uh, our, our club also participates in education and community outreach, uh, you know, 
teaching folks uh, who may be new to the sport, hosting tournaments that, uh, you know, that would allow folks to uh, raise the level of their game and, you know, and get outside and be active and, and you know, do things uh, within the community. Uh, some of the parks that we've, you know, helped maintain and create uh, have cleaned up a lot of the space, um, you know, with, you know, various uh, homeless, homeless population, uh, as well as, um, you know, trash and, you know, some uh, you know, weeds and, and mowing and, and things of that nature that, that our club participates in. So uh, my question is, you know, one thing that we've struggled with is, being able to have a point of contact to, you know, make proposals on uh, use of new development for parks, uh, you know, having, you know, a point of contact within, you know, city of Santa Rosa or visit Santa Rosa.com or Santa Rosa parks foundation.com or, or whatever the, you know, the proper resource may be, you know, we we're looking for uh, a more true connection and, you know, figuring out how we can, you know, be more active in the community and, uh, facilitate more planning for, you know, more of these activities as well as shared space with, you know, hiking trails and uh, golf courses and things of that nature. So uh, I'll, I'll pause there and, uh, you know, see if, see if there's some folks that uh, we should be connecting with regarding these issues. Thank you for that. And I, I think probably all of the above are good connection points. Um, we do, from a city perspective, we have some contact information uh, coming up that you can use to uh, get in touch with Emily Ander, who's doing a fantastic job hosting tonight from behind the scenes, but she's also highly involved with the Measure M project and she can connect you uh, directly to myself as well as our recreation deputy, Kelly Magnuson. We can both, um, work with you and be a, a direct contact for you, uh, for your ideas. Uh, we work with a lot of folks in the community that, uh, and we always look for partnerships. So all ears, and I'm, I don't wanna speak on behalf of, of Kim, if she has any ideas, I, you know, and I don't wanna put you on the spot, but if you had anything to say, um, please feel free. Otherwise I'll turn it back to Sean. Yeah, I, I definitely uh, just will, uh, Sean, my contact information, is here. Um, I think we have some mutual friends. I have, I've heard your name and a couple other people that are related um, in your organization. So I think that it's an opportunity that we, we can work together and, and talk about some things. So I do uh, very much look forward to talking and meeting with you. Sean, did you have anything else to add or did you want to wrap it up? Yeah, I'll just uh, I'll thank you both for uh, hosting this meeting, and uh, you know it's it's a great place for us to um, you know figure out what options are available for connecting. And and Kim, you're right, we do have some mutual friends. In fact, uh, I think we were grabbing a bite to eat when uh, you had seen Kevin just the other day, and I was actually with him, but on the phone, so I didn't get a chance to introduce myself. But we're uh, we're looking forward to the connections. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Babs followed by Steve Rabinowicz. Babs, if you, I would, um, I'm enabling your speaking permissions. Please state your full name for the record if you so choose and offer your question or comment. Babs, you're still muted. I'm sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. Okay, hi, I'm Babs. I live in uh, Northeast Santa Rosa. I'm um, referencing what Kate had proposed, and that was a dog park near Franklin Park or on Franklin Park. I'm a 65 year old female single with an active dog. I physically don't have the ability to run my dog or get her exercise. Um, I have been assaulted at Franklin Park because I'm there, I'm alone. I've had a gentleman pull his knife on me during the day where kids are in the park. Um, it is really right now, as she stated, an unsafe place for the neighborhood to go to. Um, you know, it, it's one of those things, this would be a, a safety issue for the residents to be able to have that kind of setup and have the physical ability, as she stated, to gather and to get to know our neighbors. And in this neighborhood is a lot of people in the same situation I am. There are a lot of dogs, there are a lot of people 65 and older, there's a lot of single females. 
So, um, you know, whatever it can take that we can put out there that we can make this happen, it would be a wonderful addition and it would increase the safety of the neighborhood too. So that's it. Thank you. And I, I'm sure all of us are very sorry to hear about your problems with safety issues at the park. And I just want to thank you for your comment. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Our next speaker is Steve Rabinowitz. Steve, I'm enabling your speaking permissions. Please state your comment or question. Hi, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, I have been involved in the Prince Memorial Greenway for approximately 30 years since it was a uh, channelized creek and citizens in the community and the council and many others have created an incredible resource in our community, which is now a beautiful open space, a community park in, in a sense with the Prince Gateway Park, uh, bike trails, walking trails, it provides open space for our community. And it links bike trails throughout our city and county all the way to the Redota Trail, linking it all the way to Sebastopol and Forestville, and in the future linking to the um, Southeast Greenway and parts of the county to the east. Um, and the Greenway in, in, is a wonderful resource, but it has suffered over the years because of course the Parks Department in all their good at work has really not had the funds to be able to maintain it to the degree it needs to. It has had a lot of use and has become rather isolated from the community. Recently, the city parks folks and the public works have done a good job in trying to take care of some of the deferred maintenance. But the deferred maintenance is very severe. Um, there has been homeless encampments which come and go. There has been graffiti, which is rather constant, some of which has been removed, but it's still a problem. Um, there are problems of deferred maintenance uh, regarding um, continual uh, trash and other things that are thrown into the creek, damage to the rock walls, damage to the park benches, which were artistically created by Art Start, um, damage to the plaza, and impacts to the business community. The Railroad Square Association, the hotels along the creek, including the Hyatt, Chamber of Commerce and others have united to try to do something to make sure that we we continue to maintain the Greenway and improve it. It's an important community resource um, in terms of our efforts to attract development downtown. It's an important uh, part of our community in terms of providing open space, which we need so badly. Um, and it connects to different parts of the community. And, and for another aspect is that uh, kids from uh, the uh, Roseland area walk on it to go to Burbank Elementary School. So we really need to embrace it as a community. I really hope that we can find the funds and um, be able to um, maintain it as it should be and bring the community back because it is an incredible resource and quite frankly it has suffered um, greatly. So I know that the the parks um, department and, and the uh, folks from the public works um, as well have tried their best, but we really do need more funds to be able to supplement their efforts. And I also want to give a plug to the Southeast Greenway because they're con connected in a sense. Um, you can ride from the parts of uh, the west part of the county and the smart bike trail. People will be able to go along Sonoma Avenue, which is a class two bike path to connect to the Southeast Greenway and then go all the way up to Spring Lake Park and points east. Tremendous opportunity. The Southeast Greenway, I just want to say, is a transformative project um, with community gardens, with bike trails and park facilities within it. So I'm just hoping it, it, it is something that the city will embrace and that these funds can be used for. I don't really have a question. I do want to thank the Parks Department for what they do. And I, I really hope we can find funds to be able to continue to maintain it and improve the Prince Memorial Greenway and find funds to do the transformative work we need to on the Southeast Greenway. So thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ben Miller, followed by Julie Chasen. Ben, 
I'm enabling your speaking permissions. Please state your question or offer your comment. Hi, uh, thank you so much for uh, offering the opportunity for people to speak up like this. And thank you for all you do at the Rex department. We really appreciate all the green spaces we have. Um, my comment in, is kind of in relation to what Mr. Seiler had brought up earlier. Um, I didn't know that he'd be here tonight, but I thought I'd be speaking up on behalf of uh, people who enjoy using the open park spaces for disc golf primarily. Uh, I just wanted to bring up some numbers for you. There's a professional disc golf association, which I'm a part of. And over the past three years, there's been an exponential amount of growth. Uh, in 2018, there was 46,000 uh, registered members. In 2019, this increased 15% to 53,000. But then in the last year, uh, that has increased 33% to 71,000 active members. And a great percentage of those members are new members. There's 83% of those PDGA members were new in the last year. And then if over 50% were also new um, added to their junior aged members. So it's a sport that's growing and thriving, especially in the age of coronavirus, where people need to be outside, but also to be socially distant. There are um, a few courses in the uh, area, which Sean had brought up, but there isn't anything to in the Northeast area. And as you go North, the closest thing that you have is Lake Sonoma there. Um, so I think there'd be a great opportunity to uh, possibly incorporate some more disc golf courses in these areas, um, even starting small with something that might be more introductory for your, the people who are newer to the sports, uh, something that's a little bit shorter or more kind of what we call a pitch and putt format, where it's more like a, like a kin to mini golf or a um, chipping green that somebody might use as uh, an introduction to the sport. We've noticed that there's a great amount of people uh, who are appear new to the sport and eager to be out there and eager to, to use the courses that are available, um, but they are starting to get uh, a little bit crowded. And, you know, as people try to remain socially distant, even as vaccines are being rolled out, I think it's important that people don't get discouraged from um, going out there because of long wait lines or not being able to maintain safe distances. So I just wanted to kind of present some of those numbers for you guys and to note that uh, California is actually the second highest number of registered um, disc golfers in the professional association. But I think that that number is small compared to the amount of recreational or casual players who may not be an active professional membership. Um, that's the, the only comments that I had, and thank you again for the time and opportunity here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Julie Chasen is our next speaker. Julie, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please feel free to offer your question or comment. Um, yeah, my comment was just in favor of a dog park at Franklin Park. I've been living in this neighborhood for 27 years and have been going to that park and seeing people, very responsible dog owners bring their dogs there. And um, there's just such a huge groundswell of people that would love to have a fenced in dog park. It would just enhance the experience for so many of us. And there are so many of us that are willing to help out and make it be successful and contribute in so many ways. And I, that's, um, I basically just want to say we're, we're ready to, to do it and have it be an amazing asset for our community and that will serve our neighborhood and other neighborhoods. And so, yeah, I just think it's a fantastic thing. And now is the time. So that's that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Joey Smith. Joey, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please feel free to offer your question or comment. Hi, thank you very much. I live here in Rincon Valley and have all my life and went to Maria Carrillo, <laughs> Sequoia, Rincon Valley Middle School. I am uh, logging on. I uh, really appreciate everyone's comments. Dog owner who loves dog parks. Also incredibly excited about the Southeast Greenway. And that's uh, not why I logged on to this meeting, but I wanted to say that. Um, I logged on to talk about community gardens. Um, 
simply put in the places I have spent time uh, where there are community gardens, good things happen. Um, they, just like Steve said about Prince Memorial, they bring the community in. And um, I think that they, if you go to Bayer Farm, it's one of the best examples. Before Bayer Farm was incorporated into the park system, we had to look at other counties. Alameda County has a few. Santa Cruz County has a few. Where there's a playground, people gardening, growing food, um, usually a lawn, people playing, maybe a skate park. Um, I have found, for instance, I know it's not in this <laughs> region, but place to play is crying out for one. But I also think my local park, I've always gone to Rinkin Park has a lot of room, um, doesn't take up a whole lot of space and we don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's um, there's a lot of information out, out there and I'm sure other city managers um, that you can talk to about how to set one up for low cost. You can even get people of course to um, pay a little money to rent their community garden spot, their plot, I should say. And it brings in beauty, it brings in biodiversity, and it brings in a sort of a sense of purpose and ownership that I think is unique to community gardens, although similar to dog parks where they're basically, you know, the city can use public money to get it going, but then they're pretty self-sufficient um, because they attract um, community. So uh, I guess the only question I would say is, is that in the works? Um, are there any plans for that? A community gardens in our, in our parks. Thank you. Thanks, Joey. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, we, we are in the works at Kiwana Springs Community Park, which I am trying to remember my map, I, is in the southeast quadrant of the city. Uh, but it's going to be a, a, a relatively moderately large community garden. We are working with a, um, a group uh, that used to have a garden uh, along Tokay Street and they need a new space and the community did plan for that in their master plan with that park. Um, so we are in the works for that. It's going to be nearby, uh, not quite in this quadrant, but um, I will share with you we have um, we have we would just love to work with you if you are interested in in looking further at that and developing that um, to, we have contact inform, contact information at the end of the um, slide or we also have information on our website we'd love to connect with you and and see if you're interested um very much so yeah it's it's we we do really we have um i'm, I'm always talking about our volunteer program we have amazing volunteer program and uh, they're helping us. Uh, we work together with the volunteer program to um, to start to start these as well. There is a small, I will say also there's a small community garden at Finale Park, which is south of, actually that is in the, that's going to be in the northwest quadrant, but it uh, there is one there as well. So there's options and, and we always like to hear from folks um, who uh, want to start up something something new so definitely reach out to us um, I'll do that thank you and I'll check out the finale I haven't I haven't been by there didn't know about it so I'll check that out and definitely look into uh, the volunteering that's on the final slide tonight uh, we have some contact information for you so we can so we can talk a little bit further okay great uh, yeah thank you thanks thank you everyone Jen, I see no other hands raised. Okay. Do we need to have we are there any other Q&A questions we need to answer? I'll put that back to our host team. Um, I'm seeing one more hand raised here. Oh, okay. The speaker is Farah. Farah, please state your name for the I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your name for the record and offer your question or comment. Hi, my name is Farah Cuenca. Um, I live in Santa Rosa, Bennett Valley area, the um, southeast side. And uh, my comment is about um, 
I don't care where this would be, but I would like to see more turf fields for um, athletics. Yeah, ver más canchas. Pardon? Hello? We can What? hear you. Yeah, Hello. Sarah. Sí, nosotros la escuchamos. Okay. I'm sorry, can you still hear me? ¿Escuchan todavía? Yes, we're just having a problem with the um, interpretation. Um, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Hold on, just one moment. Yeah, this is uh, the first time we're doing this, so bear with us. Okay. Um, it's it's a little bit different than having a regular Zoom meeting, so really appreciate your, your patience. Um, and it looks like we're probably set to go. So go ahead, Farah. Apologize okay. for that. That's totally fine. Um, <laughs> we have four children, and they all play um, for Atletico Soccer Club. And right now, um, I don't mind driving you know, in four different directions. We have one kid who's near Roanoke Park, one who's sometimes near the um, at a place to play at Franklin Park, you know, and we get them all there. But um, my, what I would like to see is more turf fields for not only soccer, but other athletics that could be played there. Because once it starts raining, our club in particular is rained out. Whereas the turf fields that we do have at Trioni are um, reserved by United. And so when it starts raining heavily, our whole club is out of practice. And um, coincidentally, I feel like, you know, our club has really proven itself. You know, it's, um, we have children that have been sent to Harvard and Stanford, UC Berkeley, NYU, UC Davis, and these kids really are working with minimal support, I feel like, from the city because, like I said, when once the rain comes, our whole club is out of practice. And I just feel like it would be great for the community to support this club, particularly because we have a majority of the, the kids of this club receives athletic scholarships, and they are um, a lot of them are first time um, college attendees. And um, I just would like to see that more of that because I feel like it's just kind of disheartening that um, this club in particular seems to be, and not only for our club, there are other clubs that um, are out of practice once the rain comes. Um, but I just feel like, you know, there's only one club that really gets to practice year round and because they have access to the turf fields. And, um, and also if we do have the turf fields, we can invite more tournaments, which, you know, brings more money in for the city as well. Great, thank you, Farah. And if you don't mind me clarifying, I just would like to clarify turf fields. Are, are you looking at um, artificial turf fields or regular lawn type turf fields or, or either? <laughs> um, well, I would, you know, normally I'd say whatever, you know, but um, honestly, because of the, the rain would be the issue, I would think, you know, like a turf field, like an all weather field would be great because um, the kids can, you know, Uh, practice throughout the weather, like um, United who does have ex access to the turf field, they do practice year round because the turf can um, withstand the rain. Um, so right now, as it stands, once it rains, it's not only are they not practicing that day, but it could be weeks on end until, you know, the rain dries up and the kids won't tear up the field once they get their cleats on them again. All right, great. I appreciate the clarification and thanks for your comment. Thank you. We have one more speaker, Derek Wayne. Derek, I am enabling your speaking permissions. Please feel free to offer your comment or question. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. This is a wonderful, wonderful uh, chat about parks, and I'm so excited about these possibilities. Um, the dog park in Franklin Park sounded wonderful. I'm full support of that. Would love to see that happen. But I just wanted to jump on and respond to Joey's comment, the gentleman who came before me regarding gardening in parks. I am an avid gardener and a homeowner here in the Memorial Hospital District. And we have a nice park here named Eastside Park, which um, I would love to see a community garden at and would love to volunteer my time, my time at. I have volunteered at the Luther Burbank Home and Gardens as well as the Huntington Library in Pasadena. And I would love, love, love to have a community garden right next door to my house. Great, I, I really appreciate that. And and similar to Joey, if you if you we have some contact information at the at the end of the presentation, um, if you'd like to get in touch with us. Otherwise, we're, we're relatively easy to find on the Recreation and Parks site. Um, love to keep the conversation going. 
so I'll turn it back to our host. Is there anything, any any additional questions that we can that we have or anything in the Q&A that needs to be answered? Yes, there are two in the Q&A that we need to answer if there are no more hands. There are no more hands. Thank you. The first question is, um, I know there was a proposal to have Franklin Park host safe parking for the homeless community that is currently residing on Industrial Avenue. Has there been any more consideration to this matter? Oh, I am unmuted. There you go. Uh, I we are working the the recreation part of par recreation and parks is is working on that. I don't think we have any additional updates for you at this moment, um, but we can take this consideration and help you get the right answer on our FAQ site so that we can point you in the right direction. I don't want to give you information that um, is misleading, so I don't have any updates for you tonight. The second question is, can you tell us how the funds will be allocated in each quadrant? Right, and so we, we're not necessarily looking at um, dividing the funds up by quadrant uh, per se, but we wanted to have the meeting per quadrant because it's a nice way for us to have the conversation because that's the type of, we do collect funds right now per quadrant. So it's easier for us to have the conversation like that. Um, so what we're going to be doing is looking at priorities um, that we're hearing tonight and that we've already heard and that we will be hearing it at future meetings, as well as our condition assessment of our parks, combining all of that and looking at uh, what we can do citywide. So it's not necessarily per quadrant, um, although it's highly likely will be um, quite a few things per quadrant. Um, and just kind of depends on um, what we hear from you all. So we'll, we'll have a little bit more as we wrap up our conversation with the community as well on that, and we can provide that information at that time. Are there any additional questions? I'll look to our host to see if we have anything else. I see no hands raised. All right, well, let's go ahead and, and get back to our, our presentation. And I think um, while the staff are doing that, uh, this next um, this next section will be where we ask you a bunch of questions about what your preferences are. And we've heard a lot of preferences and interests from you tonight. It's fantastic information for us. We love to hear it. And, and certainly uh, we're gonna be asking you to help us prioritize what is most important to you. Um, so definitely think about that as we roll into um, our next questions. And looks like we're having a little bit, we're still setting up there. Um, but I, I will share with you, I have heard from um, many of you that are on the call tonight about your various interests, which is fantastic. Um, and, and, we, and keep it coming. And certainly tonight is not the end of the conversation with the community. Uh, one thing you'll hear from us tonight for sure is that uh, we, we love hearing all your ideas and we, we, we welcome them at any time. And although we're definitely um, looking at what is being collected and, and finalizing that at the council this year, uh, we will after that continue to have conversations with the community so that we can further narrow down because we have a lot of big questions for you, big, big picture questions for you tonight. And I, I know at, at some point we're gonna need to return to the community and dig a little deeper. So we're making sure uh, not only are we having equity throughout the city in all quadrants, but that we're addressing some of the priorities that you have or all the priorities that you have told us about. And so I will, looks like we're ready. So I will turn it over to our host to start us up with our polling. Okay, I'm just gonna repeat the directions for um, participating in the poll questions. All questions are either single or multiple choice. You must answer all questions in order to submit your responses. The submit button is at the very end of the poll. You may need to scroll to the bottom of your screen to find it. If you are completing the poll on your smartphone, you must answer the first question before you can answer the second question, etc. 
If you are participating in the meeting by a landline, you will not be able to participate in the poll at this time. However, the poll will be turned into a survey and be available on the project webpage on Monday. Once everyone has completed the poll and it has been closed, the results will appear immediately and Jen will walk through the results. Thank you, Emily. All right, so let's get started. These are gonna be fun. <laughs> And number one, how satisfied are you with the condition of Santa Rosa Parks? You've got some, some variety of choices there. Looks like five choices. And number two, we heard from some of you talking about safety. How do you feel safe when you visit Santa Rosa Parks? And we've got some, some ideas, always, never, sometimes, et cetera. And number three, what park features do you most do you use most often? And this would be multiple choice. And I believe you can select select um, up to three. Hopefully, the host will jump in and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, right, I think it's at least up to three. Um, we're doing our best with the technology here, um, and so bear with us. <laughs> We're, it's a it's a learning process for us at all times, I feel. Uh, but for number three, we've got athletic fields, which we've heard of, sports courts, um, bike pump tracks, playgrounds, dog parks, swimming pools, remote control tracks, natural areas, skate parks, ponds, lakes, and creeks. And again, those are capturing the things that we have available out there in the city now. And number four, what are the most important qualities you want in a park? And so we've heard um, about some of your important qualities tonight. And so here we've got some uh, areas for you to fill out. And we've also got other, just in case we're not quite covering it, but we've got safety, aesthetics. How does it look? Uh, is it well-maintained? We've got natural landscaping, ease of access. Is it easy to get in and out of the park? Can you park or can you walk or bike there easily? Quiet spaces are the theme of the park. Is that important? And variety of activities. And again, that's another multiple choice question. And then number five, what existing park features would you like to see most improved in Santa Rosa. And although we say features here, it's, it's, it's amenities, it's the same kind of thing. It's all the things we have in the park, athletic fields, park pathways, park access, benches, trash cans, drinking fountains for site furnishings, park lighting, picnic areas, swimming pools, trees and landscaping, playgrounds and sport courts too, which includes anything that's on a court, tennis, pickleball, basketball, all that kind of stuff. And number six, what existing park features would you like to see most improved in Santa Rosa? Do we have a repeat here? <laughs> Let's just make sure. Oh no, we've got a little bit more uh, features for you to choose from here. Bike trails, public art, skate parks, sand volleyball, bocce, hiking, fitness equipment, restrooms, community gardens, and of course, other. So we, we've, got a, we've got a lot of things going on in Santa Rosa. It looks like we had divided up in two questions there. Um, how often do you have, number seven, how often do you have gatherings or events at parks and facilities? This would be pre-COVID, of course. <laughs> Um, we hope to get things open. Um, I'm sure all of us are ready to get back to getting together. But meanwhile, think about before COVID, how often did you have gathering events at parks? And so we've got weekly, monthly, uh, yearly, annually, rarely or never. And number eight, how would your city of Santa Rosa parks and recreation experience be improved? Better maintain parks more recreation programs, 
newer park amenities or more natural parks. And number nine, what city of Santa Rosa recreation programs or activities do you currently participate in or have you participated in the past? So adult sports, senior center programs, camps, fitness or wellness, aquatics, special, special interests, uh, such as personal enrichment classes, golf, boating, fishing, events, so that's Kids to Parks Day, fishing in the city, those are uh, Senior Expo, Fairy Tale Ball, those are examples, and neighborhood services programs. And number 10, uh, number 10 is the big question. So number 10 is a list of all of the um, allowable categories in the Measure M tax measure. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a way for us to kind of understand um, the importance, uh, which one would be the ones we should prioritize over anything else. And so I won't read those again. Those are the same that we've, we've heard and seen in the very beginning. And I'm gonna check in with our host to see how we're doing on the poll. We have half of the participants responding at this time. Okay, so we're gonna let that stay up there for a little while and give you a little bit more time to um, fill that out. That's a lot of information. <laughs> and I believe this is our last poll if I'm looking at my notes correctly here. Um, so we'll give you some time and we'll stop talking so you can think about um, your answers. Okay, I'm going to check in with our host again and see how we're doing on the polling. And I, I know it's a lot of information, but um, just listening to all your comments today, we know how important it is for you. We're at 60% now. Okay. So we'll, I'm just going to give it another minute or two here and I'll check back in. I know we're running uh, long, but I would, it's really important that we hear from you and you have this opportunity. Um, and again, for those of you that have neighbors or um, other residents of the city that would like to participate, this same survey will be online um, at the uh, Parks for All website, srcity.org Parks for All site and this information will be there so they can participate if they are not able to attend tonight. And then we also have a couple other meetings coming up that we'll talk about. And if they weren't able to attend this meeting, they certainly welcome to attend uh, the others we have planned as well.
We had about 70% um, okay. up in May when that came up. All right, and I, I know this takes a long time, but again, thank you very much for um, your patience with us as we're we're going through. It's 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 great to hear from you all as well as collect uh, feedback. Uh, the, the other thing I'd like to mention too is that there's quite a bit of information about Measure M on the city's website. There's also a link to the county's information about the overall tax measure. It is a countywide tax measure. And we're here tonight talking about the city's portion, but if you're interested in the big picture um, and you go to the city's Park for All website, there is a link to the larger tax measure where you can see what's happening and what the larger tax measure is all about. I'll look back to our hosts. How are we doing? Are we still collecting feedback or are we leveling off? We've leveled off at 15 responses. All right. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at the responses. Okay, hopefully you can all see this. This is the fun part. <laughs> we get to see what everyone's thinking. And so how satisfied are you with the condition of Santa Rosa parks? We had two 40% at not satisfied and satisfied um, as results for number one. Uh, number two, do you feel safe when you visit Santa Rosa parks? 60% uh, most of the time, and it looks like the next 20% rarely. Let's see, number three, see if I can fit it all on my screen here. What park features do you use most often? Okay, so this was multiple choice. It looks like there was a variety of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven areas. Uh, so it looks like the largest percent is natural areas, open space at 67%, and we've got 27%, 27%, 30%, 3% for playgrounds, dog parks, and swimming pools, and sport courts at 20%, and athletic fields at 33%, ponds, lakes, and creeks at 40%. Uh, so that's that's interesting. I think it really... Uh, echoes what we've heard tonight. And what are the most, number four, what are the most important qualities in a park you want in a park? And so uh, number one looks like safety, 73%. Uh, Well-maintained was coming in at 60%. And 53% ease of access. And 33% natural landscaping, followed up by, what do we have, athletics, variety, and something else. Number five, what existing park features would you like to see most improved in Santa Rosa? 47% for athletic fields. And let's see, we've got the next playgrounds, 40%. Site furnishings, benches, trash cans, drinking fountains, 33%, as well as trees and landscaping at 33%. Um, so quite, quite the spread of, um, of things on there with athletic fields um, at 47. Number six, what existing park features would you like to see most improved in Santa Rosa? And so 67% are hiking trails 
and 47% bike trails and uh, restrooms and community gardens at 40%, followed up by art, volleyball and bocce courts and fitness equipment. And we've got some other ideas out there as well. Number seven, how often do you have gatherings, events at parks and facilities pre-COVID? Uh, monthly, that's great to hear. Folks are out and about uh, is 33% and weekly is at 27% followed up by rarely and yearly and never. Number eight, how could your city of Santa Rosa parks and recreation experience be improved? And we have 47% more recreation programs and we've got 40% better maintained and 40% more natural parks, 33% newer park amenities and 30% other. Number nine, what city of Santa Rosa recreation programs or activities do you currently participate in or have in the past? And so adult sport leagues at 53%, uh, that's definitely a popular activity in the city. And we've got camps, fitness or wellness classes, as well as aquatics and kids to park stay type of events in the 40 percentile range, followed by special interests, neighborhood services, and senior center programs. And finally, um, how would you like to see your city of Santa Rosa Parks Measure M for all funding prioritized? This was the kind of the big priorities that we were looking for, big picture. 47% uh, improve and develop athletic fields, playgrounds, restroom, picnic areas, and visitor amenities at 47%. Let's see, followed by 13% create and expand parks, trails, bikeways, public art and recreation, historical facilities at 13% and 13% also was for improve the trails along waterways and riparian areas to benefit fish, wildlife habitat and water quality. Uh, and then we've got a split between uh, the remainder. And so I, I'm gonna give our host time <laughs> <laughs> to document all of this information. We are uh, looking at alternative options, but for now, when we're using Zoom, um, we're having a hard time capturing all that information. So we need a little bit of extra time to capture that. So bear with us, but um, I can't thank you enough for participating in this and hanging in. I know it's it makes it into a long evening, but uh, we certainly have fun. Uh, communicating with you all and enjoy hearing um, hearing things. Um, some things are new for us, some things we've heard before. And so I'm going to look to our host to see how they're doing with um, collecting all the information. I've captured everything I need. Thank you. All right, great. Thanks. We can go ahead and close that and look at, um, do we have a slide for next steps? Oh, that's right. We did put another Q&A here just in case there was something we missed, but we do have a whole section talking about what we're going to do next with this information. So if you have any questions about that, we might be able to answer it on our next slide. But before that, um, if there were any last questions that we might have missed, um, certainly this is the time to, to ask and we will also have um, additional opportunities um, outside of this meeting to follow up with questions. So I'll look to our host. Is there anybody that has any last questions uh, that we needed to answer? We have um, two questions um, in the Q&A feature. Um, but if anybody wants to raise their hand now for additional questions um, to, to ask live, please do so now. Um, so, okay. There's, there's one um, a live comment. Do you want to, should we do those before answering the Q&A? Sure, sure. We can definitely get to those and then follow up with Q&A. Okay. I'm okay. Grab the timer slide of Mary Lou. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Our speaker here is Sean Seiler. Sean, I've enabled your speaking permissions. 
please feel free to offer your question or comment. Yeah, hello again. Um, sorry, I'll keep this short. I know I already gave uh, my three minutes, but I, I hear a lot of great ideas. Um, my, my question is related to how how will these ideas be discussed and decided upon? Um, I know you mentioned like kind of internal committees and things of that nature, uh, but how what is that process and, and how does that work? Let me unmute myself first. Sorry about that, Sean. Uh, thanks for your question. We do have, we are covering next steps in the, in the next slide, but I'll jump into this a little bit to let you know that part of our next steps are to collect all of this information as well as information from uh, two additional meetings we're holding as well as our previous meeting and any additional survey and comments and things we collect uh, from online surveys. Um, what else are we doing? We're, um, we're going to take that information and collect it and work with our hosts. So um, while Kim Blink has been fantastic to help us with all of this, um, certainly the Santa Rosa Parks Foundation, as well as our other hosts across the city, will help us analyze the information to make sure that we are presenting the information in a manner in which they also heard and bringing that forth to our Board of Community Services, which is a council appointed board for feedback and information. And then of course, we will be returning to council for some feedback on the next steps for what we can do based on the information we receive after all these meetings. And I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to seeing what that looks like. Um, we've received quite a bit of information. So there's, there's a process to it, but essentially uh, we're looking at collecting all the information, working on um, putting it together in a format that's um, easily digestible to the community because it's a lot of information as well as something that's easy to look at and, and respond to for our Board of Community Services. And then finally to council for those um, final feedback. Uh, it doesn't mean that we're going to make every decision for what's going to happen in between now and the year 10 um, this year, but we, we want to have some forward momentum and progress because we already have some initial, initial um, expen expenditures approved for fire-related park damages. Uh, and so we'll look at what we can do. Uh, we won't really know until we start um, analyzing the data, if that helps explain it a little bit better. Uh, it's definitely helpful. Um... Are there any deciding factors such as like, you know, contribution to, uh, you know, the course's revenue, uh, you know, to the city? Like, what, what are some of the deciding factors that might be looked at when, when you're running this analysis? And, and I, I appreciate that. We will definitely be working with our host uh, for that. We do something similar with the, uh, with other funds we receive. We look at um, what, what things are critical, such as safety, and what things do the community does the community want? Where do we find connections for those that we can move forward, something we can move forward with and have real results out in the community? I mean, one of the things I've heard most frequently is we want to see, visually see results in the community from this measure. And so we're gonna be taking that into consideration and, and working with our hosts um, to help us narrow down and, and, and look at those features. So we've got safety. What are we hearing? Are there any collective thoughts we're hearing in the community? Are there any potential priorities where we can we can look to those? Um, we're not quite there yet, I would say. <laughs> so we're still we still need to analyze the data, and we'll be coming back out to the community so that we can make sure we heard you right, and make sure we got the priorities right. So we're collecting some of that data tonight. It, it, there's really nothing entirely else um, that we're thinking of at this moment, but when we start to see what the priorities out of this, uh, out of the community meetings become, that's where we can start to look at synergies between some of the funds we already have and some of the groups that we meet with. Um, so we don't have an exact answer for you this moment, but that's the direction we're moving. Cool. Yeah, and I'm sure this is going to be an ongoing thing. Uh, in terms of the voice of the community, Outside of meetings like this, is there any place for us to, uh, you know, make that voice heard? I mean, I've heard a lot about, you know, dog parks, which is, I think, is an awesome idea. Disc golf courses, which, of course, I'm a fan of. 
um, you know, and, and community, you know, involvement projects at parks, like all these things we'd love to scream to the rooftops about, um, you know, like outside of these meetings, where can we voice those? And, and for those that can't be here today in these meetings. It looks like Kim wants to say something, so I'm going to step back. <laughs> yeah, I just I just wanted to say, Sean, that um, one of the things and why I was so interested in being a part of this meeting is for groups to reach out to the Parks Foundation to if there is a specific interest, you know, we we would love to be a part of that to help something come to fruition. So let's just take disc golf, for example, if at the end of the day, if that's something we can help in the Parks Foundation run, uh, help raise funds for specific things, uh, we collect those uh, directly with the 501c3 and make sure that those are earmarked directly to the city for things like that. So we just try to look for different things that we can help partner up with. Um, and so again, um, reach out to the Parks Foundation and we can have conversations too to just see how we might help certain projects and interest groups to, to get that done. That's awesome, thank you. And I'll just add that every time that we go out to the community is an opportunity to provide your feedback. We'll be going to the Board of Community Services as well as Council, those are all opportunities to provide feedback um, is as we're collecting some of this info, if it turns us back out to have additional meetings, we will do that with focus groups. Um, uh, we really wanna make sure that we're moving forward in a way that is, is, is gonna work for as many people as possible. You know, We try to make everybody happy as much as possible, but um, we're gonna be working really closely with our hosts as well as looking for those synergies with funds we have and Santa Rosa Parks Foundation as well and other partners we have. And are there, are there any other questions um, from the community at this point? I'll look back to our hosts. I, I see no other hands raised, but there are some Q and A's. Okay. Um... The, the first question is, please respond regarding more turf sports field funding in Santa Rosa. Um, and I'm not sure if that means um, how much money do we spend maintaining fields? How much does it cost to build a new turf field versus an um, all weather field? Um, what that is. Right. I, yeah, I, I'm not sure what it is. I will certainly try my best. <laughs> I would say turf fields, like any amenity we have are, are funded um, through the, uh, if we're going to do something new with it, with a um, anything, any amenity, it can be funded through the park um, development impact fees we collect if there's enough funds for it. Uh, sports fields are pretty pricey. Um, especially all weather turf fields can be really expensive. So when you think about the amount of funding that the city of Santa Rosa is receiving, $1.9 million a year sounds amazing. And it is, we are super excited to share this opportunity. Uh, however, when you start um, comparing it to everything that everyone's want, even on this call alone, that's certainly not enough to do that. So an, an athletic field can cost a, a million and a half dollars by itself with no stands or nothing else to support it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a costly, it's a costly endeavor. Uh, for maintenance, maintenance is funded through the general fund. And uh, right now um, I am, <laughs> this is terrible. I'm gonna guesstimate it that we have around 20, 22 or 23 maintenance staff. Um, I haven't checked in the last few months. Um, but essentially, we have about that many folks, uh, just park maintenance staff, um, that are dedicated to that. We also have a, a crew that has a combination of park maintenance and street maintenance to try to um, look at synergies we have between those two teams to try to uh, get out to the, to the fields to maintain them. Uh, we also do have some sports groups that volunteer for maintenance as well for some things, especially baseball. Uh, we've got some, where we used to have some volunteers there, it's a really strong volunteer program. So um, 
I'm not exactly sure what the question was, but essentially th those are the ways where we're engaged somehow, some way with athletic fields. Um, hopefully that answers your question. And again, if, if, if I didn't answer your question, we have ways for you to communicate with us and, and there's ways um, um, to get your question answered and keep the conversation going. Okay, the next question comment is, can you give ballpark estimates on what things cost? What could you afford for the $1.9 million a year? And you just talked about the field, so you could do one field without any um, amenities. Okay, yeah, so uh, appreciate that. And yeah, so if a field, you know, like an all weather field by itself is, is, is pretty costly, a million and a half to two, we're gonna this, you know, uh, we're going to look at installing um, all weather sports fields at a place to play coming in the next few years. So we'll have better data on what it really costs, but those are the estimates. Um, and let's see, what else have we recently done? We recently got an estimate to replace Colgan Creek playground and that's in the Southwest part of the city. And that is a average size medium to small playground and it's about $290,000 to replace the playground that doesn't involve any other changes to the park whatsoever. It's taking out what's there and replacing it with something new. Uh, for instance, at Dutch Floor Park, which is um, in the, <laughs> I'm having to think about this, in the northwest quadrant just above Highway 12, um, we're engaging with a group and there's a um, two playgrounds there and we would we need to replace the playgrounds and the fitness equipment, but they're far apart from each other. So that means that we're not just replacing the playgrounds, we're also moving them, which is even more costly. Uh, and although we don't have an estimate in that, if you take the cost estimate I just had for just replacing, you can imagine how much that is going to cost. Um, well into the um, just below a million dollars or just floating above that, depending on what that community decides to do. Um, for uh, Coffee Park was recently entirely replaced uh, due to the fire damage it received in 2017. And the estimate to replace that park was five, approximately $5 million. And we're about four, four something, somewhere between 4.2 and 4.7 on that for total costs. Uh, for that park. Um, what else have we done recently? So you can imagine when you talk about um, when you talk about capital improvements, um, it does it does cost a lot, even though 1.9 is fantastic. Uh, we're super excited to have it. it. It that's one of the reasons why we're having this conversation, because we know we're going to have to make some decisions about priorities. And one of the other reasons we're having this conversation as well is so that we can get a good sense of what is really of interest to the community beyond just the things that we hear day to day. Um, so even beyond this parks measures, we can get a good understanding of where we should be heading in a direction, even beyond the funding that we might receive from this measure. As I mentioned with the grants, we are always looking for ways to try to combine funds and combine forces and, and looking for ways to to do that and stretch our dollar. Um, there's also the consideration, this wasn't asked, but of timing. Um, for, those of, for those that have gone through a master plan process between deciding, essentially designing your park and what you want and it getting completely constructed and you can play in it is about three years. And we have a 10 year limit on this. So that's another consideration that we'll be thinking of as well is what can we get done in that amount of time? So hopefully that provides some insight. I mean, sure, I could talk for days about all that stuff, but I will stop. And is there any other Q&A questions I can answer? The next question is, how does the Northeast Quadrant's funding compare to other quadrants currently from um, develop, park development impact fees? Um, the Northeast Quadrant has many older home tracks, so it seems like it would have less development. Right, shoot, I actually don't have that handy. We just did a, present, a presentation at the Board of Community Services last month about this, and I wish I had it handy with me. Um, 
I, I'll tell you my experience with the looking at the park development impact fees we collect um, per quadrant that it it generally does kind of equal out among the quadrants. There's some years there's more in one quadrant and and less in the others. I think um, the amount from the north east quadrant was under two hundred thousand dollars or close to it, which is pretty low. Uh, considering overall, <laughs> as the economy grows and people are building, we receive more funds. Um, it just it just happens. Um, the previous year we see received a lot of funds in the southwest quadrant, and this year we received a, a fair amount as well, but not as much as last year. So it, it ebbs and flows over the years, and they they do somewhat equal out. The northeast also has a lot of already uh, parks already built. Whereas the Southwest, which is collecting more funds, has less parks. So it does, it does tend to equal out. And that's the intent of the general plan. And that's essentially the intent of all of us, right, to provide equal access to, to parks as much as possible. So hopefully that gives you some insight. I don't have the exact data right in front of me. The final question is just um, needs clarification on how the funding and how the partner um, or the host agencies are working with the city. So are you saying that found, that the Parks Foundation, Land Pass, and South Park CBI will be making the decisions about where the money goes? And where does the measure and money flow through what agency? Uh, so the, the uh, partners we're working with for hosting this have um, will not be making the decisions about where the funding is going. They'll be helping to guide us with summarizing the information we receive. And they also live or work or somehow are engaged in each of these quadrants and can help us have a good sense of, are we missing somebody from that community that we need to talk to? They're really just assisting us in that manner to kind of make sure that we are reaching deep into the communities to be connected with folks. And uh, we're also sharing our summary information, which will be shared widely with the community as well um, to help to, to see if there's something we miss. Is there some target group that we should go back out and get more information from? So they'll be assisting us that way, but not making any decisions. Um, the decision makers are our elected officials. Ultimately, um, you know, we don't want to, we're going to walk in the door at the Board of Community Services as well as um, council with some really well thought out um, and organized information that we're collecting here. And the um, hosts will be helping us with that, but they certainly will not be making any decisions. That's for our elected officials. And then the, 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 fund, the flow of funding. So right now the county collects the tax dollars and distributes it, distributes, distributes it to each community within the county, including the city. So that's how the funding goes. The taxes are collected by the county, countywide, and then they distribute our portion uh, to us uh, I think annual, at least annually, <laughs> a couple times a year. Hopefully that helps. Is there anything else? That is the final question. I don't see right. anything else. Okay, and let's look at the next steps. Um, we've had some conversations about what our next steps are going to be, but it's kind of nice to see it in writing sometimes. And there's our website will be listed again as well. Um, and just to talk about the next two meetings, why the staff are looking at this, bringing up the slide is the next two meetings. There we go. <laughs> our, our schedule for the Southwest Quadrant, it's March 18th, 530. And in the Southeast Quadrant, March 25th at 5.30 p.m. And you can find all the information you've ever wanted to know about any of those meetings at srcity.org parks for all. That's the website that's gonna contain everything we, we have as well as all the information on upcoming next steps. Um, we are going to, you know, we have, we're, gonna, we're collecting this survey of the conditions of the city as well as all the information you're all providing us with tonight and online at the surveys. And we're gonna collect all of that in April and bring it back to the uh, Board of Community Services and the return to city council this summer uh, as part of the budget process. 
um, with an updated information on all the information we, whatever we have at that time, that's what we are taking to council uh, to provide some initial feedback for staff. Uh, and then, as I've mentioned several times, this is not the end of the conversation. We we plan to keep this going um, throughout the life of the of the measure, um, as long as we still have funds that need to be allocated somewhere. We will continue this conversation. For us at Rec and Parks, it's fantastic um, for us to collect data, even whether it's for Measure M or not. So it's really good for us to have a pulse on what's happening out there. Um, and all of our ongoing information will be available at our website. So let's go to the last, um, the contact slide. And um, as I mentioned, um, Emily Andrew is um, doing a lot of work with Measure M um, because there's a lot going on behind the scenes with hosting this meeting. She um, is not able to do a lot of the speaking tonight. Um, but here is her contact information. And this is the, uh, another way as well that you can get in touch with uh, myself or anybody at the city and rec and parks, as well as we can put you in contact with uh, Kim from the Santa Rosa Parks Foundation as well. Um, and if you have any questions or anything at all, we are always available. Uh, we're happy to have conversations with you. We really love our rec and park, so we really we do want to hear from you. It's important to us, especially at this time where we're collecting this data. So with that, I will thank you all very, very much for attending and, and thanks um, to our hosts working behind the scenes and our interpreters. There's a lot of folks to make this happen. And especially thank you to Kim, our host uh, Santa, from Santa Rosa Parks Foundation, for helping us um, as we move forward with this measure and process. And we hope to see you soon at a Board of Community Services meeting. And please check our website for any information. Kim, do you have anything to add to that? No, I just wanted to, again, thank everyone for, um, just wanted to express my appreciation for everyone coming tonight. Um, it was really great for me to hear the public input. Uh, we really do want to hear from you. So just make sure that you go to Santa Rosa city.org forward slash uh, uh, parks for all to let your friends know about that. Fill out the survey, survey if you haven't done so. And just make sure to get the word out about the upcoming meetings. We have a, uh, a few meetings coming up. We have a meeting uh, for, uh, sorry, on um, Monday, March 15th. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry about that. We have um, the next meeting is March 18th, and that's going to be the Southwest Quadrant meeting. So that's our next meeting. So again, thank you. And thank you for the input. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much and have a nice evening. Thank you.